Rub up your engines! DeMarc says, how to make a turbo last longer? Very good question. Many cars are turbocharged because they want to make little engines put out more power, but they wear out faster, right? Change your oil. Change your oil. If I had a turbocharged car, I wouldn't even change my oil every 5,000 miles like I do now. Mine are all non turbo. I would change it every 3,000 miles. Clean oil. The oil is the same oil that's in your turbo, lubricating it, right? If you really want to make it last longer, you do that. But also, you want to do what we used to do in turbocharging. You drive them hard. When you come to your end, destination, you let it idle for three, four minutes and then shut it off. Because if you drive a turbocharged car hard, you're really going, and you turn it off, it does what's called a heat soak. The turbo and all the oil is no longer running, so it's no longer cooling itself, and it builds up and it cokes it, and it oil and stuff that's in the turbocharger will start to go bad. The heat will start to degrade it. When it's running, it's flowing through the system, dissipating heat. People that really know turbos, they'll let them idle for two, three minutes or so when they come to a destination and then turn it off. And that will make them last longer. Bucky Barnes says, Scott, I got a 2011 BMW 3 Series, 74,000 miles, made in Germany, run great. Should I keep it or look for something else? Okay, here's the thing. 11. 3 Series with only 74,000 miles. I've seen them that they can last and last and last. 74,000 miles isn't that much. They still have a lot of plastic crap that can break, yes. With that low mileage, what the heck? If you tried selling that thing, you're not going to get anything for it. So my advice would be, hey, take care of it. You never know. Now, if you said it had 174,000 miles, I'd say, well, it's probably ready to turn into an endless money pit. And the fact that it was made in Germany could still be a really good vehicle. And like I said, you're not going to get much for it. So it's running great. Why not just keep it for a while? Mr. Wolf says, I want to buy an Impala. What year is the best? Oh, I'd say probably 1967. <laughs> we had a 67 Impala. It was a great car, right? I believe there's some real fancy ones that have V8 engines. Now, those aren't bad because they were special made and they got a V8 engine. But the ones with the four cylinder engine, especially, they were garbage. And the V6s, the last 20 years, they've had a lot of problems too. I wouldn't buy any of those. But if you're a classic man, you want to get a 67 Impala or go back even further, get a 62 built like tanks, run forever. John says, Scotty, 2007 Honda Fit. Is it necessary to get a catalytic converter if I have the PO420 code? Well, the PO420 code means inefficient catalytic converter. Lots of things can do it. I wouldn't just go buy a catalytic converter. Converter. Let's say you got bad oxygen sensors. They'll trip that code even though the cat's okay. Let's say maybe your cat's just a little bit dirty. You can get catalytic converter cleaner, pour it in a gas tank, see if that'll fix it out, right? The worst of all scenarios. Let's say your engine burns oil. Well, the oil burning will clog up with carbon, burnt carbon, the inside of your catalytic converter. So if you buy a new catalytic converter, guess what? Next year, you're going to have to buy another one because it's going to get clogged with oil that's burnt too. It's a relatively complex system. On the other hand, if it runs perfectly fine, if your catalytic converter is clogged up, your temperature gauge will start going well over halfway, it'll run hotter, and you will only be able to go a certain speed because the exhaust is clogged up, right? Then you got to change it. But I've had people drive cars for five, six years with that code, and they still run fine otherwise, and they don't care. They don't do emissions testing. You don't care. You just drive it, and they run okay. Who cares? Brandon Pitcher says, do you need four chains when you put tire chains on for snow? Generally, you put tire chains on on your drive wheels. So let's say you got a plain old F-150 rear wheel drive truck, you put it on the back wheels. Let's say you have a Toyota Corolla front wheel drive, you put it on the front wheels, right? If you had a four wheel drive or all wheel drive vehicle, of course, then you'd want to put it on all four wheels. So they all have the drive. One thing about tire chains, you don't drive that far with them on. Unless you're an ice road truckers or something, you can't drive them on dry pavement. It's against the law. It will eat up the road. And then the chains, of course, will break. They're made for driving anywhere between 20 and 30 miles an hour. You can't drive them that fast. You can't drive them that far. In most cases, you only need two, one for each drive wheel. Make sure you get them on nice and snug. I just did a video and they're not bad. I tried out these snow socks that are giant covers for the tire. You can slide them on and you drive the car a little to get the rest and slide them on. And even uh, the state of Colorado says they're legal for using on the ice and snow. And they're a lot easier getting on and off than snow chains. They work quite well. You can store them in your trunk. They're called snow socks, and they work pretty good. Joseph Fraley says, I got a 2020 Ram 4. Occasionally, I feel a small shudder when I go from drive to reverse. Should I be a concern with that? I don't know how many miles you got on a thing. As they age, you'll often get a little shudder when you go out of 
park and go into reverse. Now the transmission is going backwards. Instead of going one way, it's going the other way. It'll often happen. I mean, look closely to see if there's any rubber mounts or anything that have cracked. You can play stem, and that will often give them a small shudder. And if you see that the rubber's rotten, just buy another one and put it on. That's a common thing. Pete Diffany says, should a serpentine belt tensioner be replaced after a certain amount of miles? Now, that's a very good question. Here's the thing. Some are well-made. Some are made like crap. Toyotas and Lexuses, hardly ever have to change them. They hardly ever wear out. I've seen them with 300,000 miles. They're still original, right? What you'll notice is when they start to wear out, they're, you know, spring loaded. As the spring weakens, you'll start hearing the belt chirp or squeal, especially when you start up or if you're going like 60 and you floor it and you start to hear them squealing. Then, you know, you either need a belt and if you put a belt on and it still squeals, then you need a tensioner. Now, the tensioners are pretty expensive a good one. So, if it's not making any noise, it's going okay. I wouldn't even really worry about it, right? But, of course, if you have something like, you know, a Fiat or a Chrysler product, the tensioners are junk and they'll just break and you'll have to replace them. And so, if you got one that's working, my advice is leave it alone. Wendell Gray says, good morning, Scotty. With Bernie's fuel injection cleaner added to my gas tank benefit my motorcycle. Well, here's the thing. You would have to use it in a modern day motorcycle that's fuel injected. You wouldn't want to use it in a carbureted one. They got a lot of rubber parts inside them that might go a little bit wonkers from the stuff, right? And if you got a fuel injector, when I put it in my Triumph, it works perfectly fine. Now, since you use a can to 20 gallons, you got to figure if you got a five gallon tank, you know, you're only going to use one quarter of a bottle of the stuff. You don't want to over concentrate. It's an old carbureted motorcycle, but I wouldn't use it in that. Brandon Spark says, what's the deal with single use bolts? Replace spark plugs. My Nissan discovered the intake manifold bolts need to replace each time. Those bolts are made for one time use because of how they tension. When you tension them up the first time, which is the only time you're supposed to put them together, they actually stretch some. And then that ability is lost when you take them apart again. They tell you they're single-use bolts. On your case, I wouldn't even have bothered getting new bolts because that's the intake manifold. They use such a small amount of torque, it's really not going to hurt anything. On the other hand, if you were doing a head gasket job where you're taking the whole head off the engine, put it back on and put new head bolts in, if they're single-use head bolts, you have to use new ones. Otherwise, the head gasket will start to leak because there's a lot of pressure and there's a much different design for head bolts holding the engine together than just holding the intake manifold. I've reused those intake manifold bolts all the time on single-use ones and never had any problems, right? More important things on the head bolts, you'd have to buy a set. SM says, Scotty, is it true with all-wheel drive I have to replace all four tires? Nail in one can't be repaired in the tire store or only replace one. Still lots of tread left in the other. So can I get two or must it be four? That's the problem with all-wheel drive systems. All the tires have to be the same size because transfer cases, they're very complex, often computer computer driven, and if the tires are different sizes, the all-wheel drive system has to compensate by that by continually readjusting things. And you know what that does? That can destroy automatic transmissions, can destroy the transfer cases over time, because it's keeping making these adjustments that with all four tires being the same, it would not have to. Zigzag, Bureau of Investigation says, I got a 2001 Chevy truck needs a paint job. Chop wants four grand to 11,000. Should I just do it myself with cans of spray paint? Okay, well, you can do whatever you want. Let me tell you, it is almost impossible possible to paint a car with cans of spray paint. One, it's extremely hard to do, and two, it'll never match. The human eye can see like over a million different shades of colors, and one can of spray paint is always a little bit different color than the other can of spray paint, right? And so you'd even notice, even if you did a perfect job, it wouldn't match all around the car. You want to paint a car, you got to do it in a dust-free environment. There's a big difference between a little can you shake it up, rattle, 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 and spray, and when they're spray painting the cars in a factory where there's machines that do it by thousandths of an inch and they do it exactly. It is very hard to get a good paint job. I've seen guys who did in the noonday sun, they literally look like crap. Okay, when it's raining when they're wet, but it's a very hard thing to do. Andy Pape 707 says, Scotty, what do you think of bodybuilders? Well, they certainly have a lot of time to work out to get their muscles going, right? Me, I could never spend that amount of time. I cheat all the time and use steroids. And of course, that's not a good thing for you, right? Now, but anybody that's that into doing something and they really like doing it, hey, more power to them. They're not harming anybody. They're exercising away, you know. As Benjamin Franklin said, all things in moderation and real bodybuilders aren't 
doing any moderation. They're going to the extreme. People want to do that exercise all the time. Me, I'm more of an Oscar Wilde man who said, whenever I have an urge to exercise, I lie down until the urge goes away. So I'm, I'm more on that side. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.